Hello. Good evening. So, I felt like it has been a while since I have done a comic book video for you guys. And as usual, it is a comic which is long out of print and which seems to be much sought after. Um, if you look at all of the different places, um, especially online, that you can purchase out-of-print items such as this. I've seen it fetch quite a lot of money, and I've had it for a little bit, and I got it for a very affordable price. I'm very fortunate, um, because I really don't like to spend a lot of money. Um, and I'm also fortunate that I've had a lot of rare items for so many years, so many decades now, because they weren't rare at the time, and now they are. But this was a more recent acquirement, and I just thought it was befitting, because we are in April, and it has been seven years as of 2023 since we lost this beautiful human being that you see here. This is a Prince comic book, and... It tells a wonderful little story, a little magical story, of course, which you would expect from Prince. Um, it was only $2 at the time, it says, up here, when it was originally sold. I spent more than that for sure, but still uh, a very affordable price considering um, the age of the comic. Um, and considering what it fetches for, I got it for a really affordable price. And I wanted to do a flip through, a complete reading of it, not just a flip through. And uh, I hope you guys all love it as we reminisce and miss the one and only Prince. So let's get into it. So here we have the first page move it a little bit, a little bit more into frame. It says, on the left, it says, Prince Alter Ego. So the name, the full name of this comic is Alter Ego. And there he is on his motorcycle that is pretty synonymous with him. You guys know he loved to ride his motorcycle. And it says, Minneapolis, the long tour is over. Prince is back in town. So he's back in his hometown in Minnesota. Now we're over here. And it says, there is music in everything. Can you hear it? He can. Listen carefully. Even the streets have a rhythm of their own. This city is his favorite song, a tune he knows by heart. And that's what first tips him off, what gives him the suspicion that something's not quite right. It's like hearing a favorite old single playing slightly off speed. You know the song well enough that even a slight variation is disturbing. On the other hand, he has been away for a while. Maybe it's just him. He's driving up to Glam Slam, the club. Over here it says, it could be that it's time to make a little music of his own. He's in the studio. And one of his protégés is saying, Ah, Prince? Anybody home in there? Yeah, he ain't said Jack in nearly three hours. Those are the musicians. Sorry, y'all might as well go home. That's Prince down there, his beautiful eyes. And up here it says, he should know better by now than to try and force things. You can't put creativity on a schedule. There he is again. It's such a good likeness, I think. 
sitting here alone in the dark isn't getting him anywhere either. Whatever it is that the song he's working on needs, he's not going to figure it out tonight. He's getting on his motorcycle again. Kachuk. Oh. Maybe a little distraction is in order. Oh, he's going off on his motorcycle. Over here it says, the distraction of choice fills his thoughts. And though it seems as if she's always been with him, they met only a short time ago. Oh, looks like a special lady. He was at the park by a favorite secluded secret place. He was writing something, a poem, a song, he wasn't yet sure. He remembers spending hours groping for an image, and then, reflected in the pond's calm surface, he suddenly saw what he was searching for. Looks like there's a girl. Here's a girl, she says, hello, and it looks like she's walking on water. And Prince says, how do you do that? Are you a mermaid? No. The secret to walking on water is knowing where the rocks are. Oh, so she's walking on rocks. The only name she would give for herself was Muse. Seems appropriate. As it turns out, she's definitely his inspiration. Over time, the two have become inseparable. She restores to him a part of himself he long ago thought forever lost. And over here you see he's kissing her, and there's a wonderful likeness of him, I think. It says, when they're together, he feels complete. What's this? Scrape! She's coming up with this motorcycle. This doesn't make any sense. Yo, tourist, where do you think you're going? So they're calling him a tourist. Oh, ma'am, sorry, Prince. I didn't know it was you. Keep an eye on my ride, Reynard. I hear this is a bad neighborhood. Don't nobody say nothing. So there he is in the front with Prince's motorcycle protecting it. And over here it's saying, this doesn't make any sense at all. The two gangs that are about to bang don't have any beef with each other, at least as far as he knows. And this neighborhood is out of bounds for them both. Hmm. Stay out of this, Prince. This is between me and the mallet. You got that much right. And Prince says, I thought you two were supposed to be leaders. What happens to your people if you start a war with each other? They really made him look handsome, I think, in a lot of those pictures. And they're starting to fight, clang, thunk. He's right, ma'am. We don't either have nothing to gain by breaking our truce. I didn't even know what we were doing out here. Neither does he. Maybe he should just be grateful that they stopped. Another five, few minutes and things would have been totally out of control. So they brought some peace, at least for the moment, right? Not that they're running all that smooth right this second. Hey, Prince, who are you to be all up in our business? There's a guy with a big, looks like he has a big bat. Everybody knows you don't carry how you supposed to. Stop me from making my own rules. Oh, so everybody knows he doesn't carry. He doesn't have any weapons. Whoosh, thump, huh? Oh, look, Prince. <laughs> Prince just kicks some ass. Ow, oh, wow. Ah, uh, you messed up now. I'm going to slap you into the middle of next week. That's what he's saying to Prince, even though the Prince just got him. And Prince says, this thing looks dangerous, and seeing as how you're too clumsy to handle it without somebody getting hurt. <gasps> he's breaking it. He's breaking that weapon. Here you go. Guess where I'm going to put it if you ever come at me again. He broke my bat, and Prince is riding off on his motorcycle. That little altercation didn't do much to quail his unease. No doubt about it, the city has a subtle new rhythm. Like a metronome, 
or like the clock ticking down on a time bomb. Now Perry's in front of Glam Slam. Even here in the Glam Slam, something's amiss. An uncharacteristic threat of violence hangs in the air. And what's that music playing inside? He can't be hearing this right. He can't be. So he's walking into the club. The singer sounds like him. A lot like him, for that matter. So does the music. That's not true. This is more than some clever mimic. It doesn't just sound like him. It is him. Uh-oh, they're playing his music without him. He remembers the sound from his childhood. Now as then, composition and performance alike are brilliant, chaotic, and powerfully disturbing. Everybody's dancing to his music. And then up here it says, But now the sound is mature and more potent than ever. Most of tonight's mysteries are solved in a single sudden stroke. This sound is what's been gnawing at him since he got back in town. This music is what's wrong with his city. Great illustration. And then he sees something that sends chills up his spine. It's not the sight of Muse who seems to have lost herself in the music that frightens him. It's the sight of him. His name is Gemini. Do you guys remember that uh, Prince has, just like the comic book says, alter egos that he would write songs under other names, pseudonyms, pseudonyms, um, and Gemini is one of his pseudonyms, but in this comic, it's his alter ego. There's another one person playing his music who sounds just like him called Gemini. Wow. And he and Prince go back a long ways. A new kid in a new neighborhood, shy and alone with only his dreams of perfect music to inspire him. Sound travels though through basement walls and onto city streets to be heard by another. Hours turn to days, to weeks, then months. Two kids jamming endlessly, united like brothers in an endless quest to unlock the secret power of music. Prince finds it first. The power to move an audience's heart, to unite them under a groove, to create a sound as brilliant and warming as sunlight. Gemini finds a power too, but of a different sort. His sound pulses with a desperate rage. His guitar lines fear into the soul of his audience, pushing them beyond the edge of reason. Even as Prince's instincts tell him, the maddeningly intoxicating music must stop. So his alter ego is him, but yet has a different effect on the audience. Different, a different vibe in the music. Okay, so we're over here now. It says, together they discovered the power of music and learned the power can harm as well as heal. Each is convinced of the correctness of his vision. Prince believes the music must be used to nurture the human spirit, Gemini to unleash the primal urges and free the rage within humanity. In the end, they agree to disagree. Gemini and the band leave Minneapolis to take on the world. While Prince returns to his roots, the months passing by in solitude as he works to perfect his art. There are moments when he has his doubts, when he thinks that perhaps the path he has chosen is the wrong one. But despite Gemini's fame and fortune, Prince could see that the music was taking its toll by relentlessly devouring his friend from within. He'd intended to plead with his former friend, to tell him again that there's more to music than anger, that there are other ways to reach people. He decided to confront Gemini when his seemingly endless apocalypse world tour hit town. This is Gemini and the Power Generation. But by then it was too late. What's wrong? 
Sober man, you were right. All the riots, all the craziness, we can't do it anymore. So that's what they're saying to Prince. We're back, Prince. Give us the music. So they don't want to be with Gemini anymore. But Gemini, where? Gone, Prince. Dead, I think. Not dead, actually, just resting. Although the staff didn't trust him with a guitar or anything else that might be used as a weapon, Gemini still managed to hone his craft, playing endless imaginary arpeggios in his head. And on the day nearly two years later, when a careless intern made a mistake, Gemini was ready, ready to take back what's his, ready to take the music as far as it can go. Twin cities, twin men. Dark has the light, yin has its yang, and Batman has his joker. Wow, and of course we know. Prince did the soundtrack to the 89 Batman film, but this is no joke. His inner demon, right? His inner dark side. There's a great big picture of Gemini. It says Gemini is alive and he's rocking the house. Hello, little brother. Long time no see. I thought you were dead. Gemini answers with a chord that is nothing less than pure explosive hatred. Does this sound dead to you? And the crowd responds in kind. The power of Gemini's sound is undeniable. These people are going to rip each other apart. This has to be stopped. This is what Prince is thinking. I thought the crowd would take you out. Gemini thinks that, oh well, like they say, if you want something done, crunch. Oh, with his guitar, he's trying to hit Prince. Do it your damn self. Oh, and Prince gets in that crack. Gemini says, now you're coming around. I didn't think you had it in you, little brother. While you're at it, why don't you kick me when I'm down? Because Prince is above him. And up here, Prince is saying, his reaction was instinctive and wrong. Gemini always did bring out the worst in him. Come on, hit me again. That's the problem. Gemini brings out the worst in everybody. And Gemini gets on his own motorcycle and says, If you're not going to get into the spirit of the thing, to hell with you. We'll talk later. Maybe do lunch? I'll have my girl call your girl. Oh, I forgot. My girl is your girl. Prince swallows a heated retort. He's got to keep his temper under control. He can't get sucked into playing Gemini's game. Gemini must be blocked blocks away by now, and with the crowd out here practically rioting, there's no way his bike is going to still be in one piece. So Prince is thinking about not following him. Is there? What are you doing here? You told me to watch your bike. Did you see? Yep, that away. That's all he needs to start. Oh, there he is, roar, so he is going after Gemini, Prince is going after him, he's got him now, and they're both roaring, Gemini has a red bike, and of course Prince has his purple bike, roar, and they're going down, damn, the car went in front of him, he swerved around it, so he lost Prince, oh, and Prince says, that's all right, this can still work, Bwonk hops his bike on the car, goes over it. Oh, come on. Go for what you know, homie. You really do think you're Batman, don't you? That's what Gemini says. Roar. Did I say damn already? Don't. I'd really hate to have to shoot you before we have a chance to catch up with one another. Oh, so Gemini's pulled out a gun. Blam. Oh, he shoots at Prince. Of course, if I don't shoot you, you will catch up with me. Got Prince's motorcycle. Swoosh. Scream! His motorcycle is over here. Actually, it's breaking. Oh no, Prince is flying off. Woof! Shark. Okay, so Prince fell off. Even as he hears his favorite bike blow itself to bits, he knows. And a quick glance around him confirms it. Gemini is nowhere to be seen. Oh no. 
Gemini got away. And then up here, I think that might be news. She says, Prince, what happened to you? And he says, I got a flat. Can I get back to my club? Sorry, Prince. This is as far as anybody goes. There's rioting all over town tonight. Half the city's on fire and it's getting worse. The city goes under curfew in about an hour for all the good it'll do. Sit it out at my place, Muse suggests. You can tell me what's going on. Prince agrees. What else is there to do? So he's going with that girl. He spins the ride in silence, but once they arrive, he tries to explain. And there his head is on her lap. And it looks like her outfit is unbuttoned. It's a complicated tale, unbelievable in many ways, and yet she follows it with ease, even anticipating what he's about to say on a few occasions. It's interesting, all the metaphors, right? Muse, and of course, Gemini, his alter ego. If he were the paranoid type, he might wonder how she knows so much, but he's not, so he doesn't. <laughs> Of course, he's captivated by a woman, as usual, right, Prince? Why do you care what Gemini does? What do you mean? So what if there's a riot at a concert? So what if he steals your band again? What he's doing is wrong, and his music is just as dangerous for the people who play it as it is for the folks who hear it. Now he's starting to kiss Muse. Starting to, oh, they're both unclothed now. I'm only trying to say that you're the star. You don't need Gemini or your band. All you need is yourself and me. So there he is, I guess, metaphorically making love to his muse. Let's get that into frame. But of course, also because it's Prince, so you know he probably <laughs> asked for a love scene in his comic. So we're up here now. But when morning comes, he's less than convinced of the strength of her arguments. Don't go. Stay. That's what Muse is saying to him. Which isn't to say that she's totally incapable of providing distraction. And there's his band. We all recognize them. New power generation. Where's Prince? Wherever he is, he's over an hour late again. This smack never happened till he started seeing Muse. It doesn't matter where he is. I'm here now. Oh no, Gemini's back. All it takes for one chord. And the band is his again. Oh, there's a new power generation. Let me get them in frame. New power generation. Oh my gosh. With their power added to his own, there need be no limit to the coming apocalypse. Only one part of his plan remains unaccounted for. Although if Prince isn't here, she's obviously done her job. Oh no. Gemini, I'm back. Ah, Muse, good. I've one final job for you, my competent little tool. Anything, Gemini. I'll do whatever you want. Just don't hurt me again. Just to love me. I do, and as long as I possess you, I can be assured that he'll come to me. All the metaphors, right? Music is his, his inspiration in life, and then Gemini's his alter ego. And as far as hurting you goes, crack, oh, he hits Muse. Gemini got her. I've hardly begun. Oh, no. And up here it says, his band is gone, his studio's been trashed. He's been had, but he's not entirely surprised. Muses, you don't need the band crap last night, aroused his suspicions, even as her body aroused him otherwise. No doubt about it, she's working for him. Gemini always did have a way with women. Yeah, he's hurt, but more importantly, he's worried. Where is the band? Could Gemini somehow have? Yep, he could. Free, the Apocalypse Tour returns to Minneapolis. Gemini and the New Power Generation, 9 tonight at Paisley Park. And up here it says. What does it say? 
The handbill told him where to find Gemini and his band, but he could just as easily have followed the path of carnage left in the wake of Gemini's music. A path that leads to this place. Where it leads from here is hard to say. Prince, you're late. The music fans the crowd's rage, which in turn gives Gemini the fuel to create more hatred a diabolical feedback that threatens to reverberate out of Gemini's control. And your lady friend is running out of time. Oh, he's gonna try to kill Muse. Gemini just doesn't care. He may be totally self-destructive. Blam, smack. But at least he's willing to share. Oh, there's Prince. He's gonna go try to help Muse, try to rescue her. Here we are at top left. It says, stay with the plan, save Muse. She says, why did you help me? Don't you know what I did to you? And he says, you don't defeat evil by becoming it. Come on, Prince. Ah, oh, you want to fight me? You've already lost. Look at your band, your fans. They're with me. We'll fight, but I'll choose the weapons. Give me your guitar. And he says, why you sell it goods? Try that one instead. It doesn't matter. Wait, Prince, don't. Muse, what? It's rigged. Oh, because he's trying to get that. Oh, Blab, oh, it broke. Or it exploded, actually. Blab or mouth, you ruined a perfectly good death trap. Evil Gemini. Oh, what are you so pissed about? You know what it cost me to rig that thing? Don't let him get to you. You can mourn for her later. Now you have to play. Prince knows that music has other attributes, subtler ones that Gemini failed to discern. Not surprising, for most of last night, even Prince had trouble hearing them. But today he hears and shares the sound, so they're both playing. Riffing off Gemini's angry solo, subverting its ragged energies, transforming them, and then, hey guys, remember the song from last night? I just figured out what it means. And now the new power generation also hears, awakening from Gemini's influence and adding their power to Prince's own. So this two energies are coming together. Music is power. Music is language. Music can inspire, heal, and transform, and today it does. All over town, people put down their weapons and began the long process of putting their world back together again. And the crowd that only moments ago gathered its ever-growing rage in preparation for the promised apocalypse now moves to the rhythms of other emotions. That's what music should do. Gemini, make you dance, move you closer to the rhythms of sex, love, even God. No, Gemini is saying, I'm not finished yet. Prince sees what's happening even before Gemini does. Gemini's power over the crowd isn't broken, just damaged. Gemini can still inspire hatred. But this time, instead of being the wellspring of the crown's rage, he is its focus. Don't. If you kill him, he wins. Oh, that's what it was. That muse is... She hasn't been killed. You can't defeat evil by becoming it. Now, where have I heard that before? A single chord washes over the crowd. And very probably saves Gemini's life. She's right. Let him go, Prince says. The only power he has is what we give him. Now let's play. And the music continues. So both aspects of Prince's personality kind of meld into one, right? And over here is just the inner cover, and it's just black, and it's talking about who all the editorial uh, directors are for this beautiful comic book. It's copyright 1991. That's right. Cover illustration was by Brian Bolin. And on the back, we have the classic picture, the classic photo shoot from Prince and the New Power Generations Diamonds and Pearls. 
Um, it's the new album featuring Get Off, Cream, and Diamonds and Pearls includes special 3D hologram cover available on Paisley Park Warner Brothers cassette and compact discs. That's correct, and I believe I had it on cassette because I didn't get a CD player till like 95, but my mother had the CD. And I believe she had her jukebox already as well, her Wurlitzer jukebox, which she still has to this day. And she used to play the CD, which is a great CD. I think it's one of my favorites by Prince, for sure. I love the aesthetic and the music. It's just, it's just so fresh and so cool and so sharp. But that's the back cover. And so now we are back. To the front cover. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed sort of the folklore that it Prince wasn't given writing credit in this, but I'm pretty sure he told the creators of this comic what he was going for and what he wanted the story to basically be. You can tell his alter ego, you know, it takes both Gemini and Prince to make his music. It can't be too one-sided either way. And the way they humanized Muse, his inspiration, and made it into a, an actual person um, who sometimes sides more with Prince and sometimes sides more with Gemini. I thought that was an interesting little, you know, little a plot line. Um, yeah, so it's hard to believe that as this video uh, airs on my channel that it's been seven years this month since we've lost him. I don't know if I've shared this on my channel, but um, my son's middle name is Amir, which was inspired by Prince's son, who passed away after only a few days. Um, I was inspired after reading his ex-wife's memoir during my pregnancy in 2017, because Prince had just passed the year prior. But I hope that was interesting. Um, I, I love it. I love this comic book. It's definitely one of my favorites, and I always share my favorites with you on this channel. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for enjoying. Please leave a comment, anything you'd like to say. I would love to hear. Take care, and good night.